Welcome back. The newly appointed Eastern Cape Health MEC, Nomakosa Zanameth, has been making her way across the province, hoping to get a sense of the challenges that lie ahead. She's taken over following the sacking of Cindy Swakomba, who's been charged in connection with corruption during arrangements for the funeral of former President Nelson Mandela in 2013. MEC Meth joins us live now on Skype to talk more about what lies ahead. MEC, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for your time. So you have been on a two-day engagement, shall we call it, with various people who are affected by the health services in the Eastern Cape. Is the province in as big a crisis health-wise as we've been reading? Good afternoon, Temekil, and good afternoon to your viewers, and thanks for the opportunity. Actually, I have not started crisscrossing the province, but I had a two-day session with the management of the department to better understand what is it that we are doing and what is it that we still need to improve it and what is the good story that we may tell. And I did that uh, successfully and I'm more empowered now. And uh, yes, uh, there are issues in the department, but you can't call them a crisis as yet. Uh, there are issues that I think because we understand them, we will do everything to try to address them, starting from understanding what is the current state of affairs in the institution, in particular on human resource issues, issues of legal services, ICT, up to the issues of finances in the institution. But beyond that, uh, we're able to look at the core service that we are delivering to our people, the primary health care in particular, and also we looked at the issue of hospitals, how they are uh, 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 working now and what is that we need to do to improve the work that we are doing currently. So yes, the two days has exposed me uh, to the department. Now I'm a better person. I understand what needs to be done. You say it's not quite a crisis, the situation in the Eastern Cape, but some of the issues that have been put forward include the poor state of hospitals, a lack of resources to meet COVID-19 demand. This was at the end of last year in the second and the first wave. Inadequate food supply at Livingston Hospital, for one. Uh, the public protector, the deputy public protector, when she was in the province around August last year, said she found one oxygen port at the Utenaig Provincial Hospital. That report was published on the 4th of August, the media report that is. The state of the art kitchen that was built in 2010 at Livingston Hospital was not being used because no one had been hired to work from there. Just those few problems that I've listed give a sense that the issues facing you are bigger than just challenges or slight problems. Do you agree? Actually, uh, because I've not been to those places that you are talking about, I will give myself time to go there. But what I understand, uh, we've got many hospitals in our province uh, to the excess of 90, and already we are starting a process of doing what we are calling a service optimization, which will be coupled with rationalization of the hospitals, not to close them down, but to right-size them, not to have a hospital just for the sake of having a hospital, but to have community health care centers that will provide efficient and effective services to our people. And we've got uh, national regulations that say what is a hospital. So in line with what national has uh, prescribed for us, we we'll first look at that issue of having many hospitals that would not meet the standards. Of the more than 90 hospitals I'm talking about, 19 of them are falling in the category of not meeting the standard of at least having 50 minimum beds. So we've got a, a, a risk or a huge a, a crisis okay. that we may say is a crisis in terms of human resources because now we've got many people that are all over but with few people that they are servicing. For an example, what was painted to me as a picture, there are hospitals that are 25-bed hospitals with an occupancy rate of 50%, which means only about 12 people are found in that particular hospital, but with a personnel of more than 100 nurses and some doctors who are looking after them. Anything? So where I will start working with the communities of the Eastern Cape and all the other important stakeholders is to make sure that this uh, direction of government of having an ideal hospital is realized in the Eastern Cape. You've already said then that there are many challenges, as you've said. South Africa is bracing at this point for the next wave of COVID-19. We're told to expect it as we head into winter. The budget allocation for the province is 26.4 billion rand under the current financial year. Do you think, A, 
that is enough money to meet all the challenges you need to address? B, will you get enough of the basics right to make sure that when the next wave of COVID-19 infections hits, the Eastern Cape is not battling as it did in 2020? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think all of us have heard uh, the MEC for uh, Treasurer when he announced the budget. I agree that we've got budget deficit. In the current financial year already, we are at more than 460 million. Uh, that uh, is the budget deficit of services that were offered to us, but we have not paid. But we must know where this comes from. Uh, it's an issue of the metropolitan that came as far back as 2014, but we're only able to honor those judgments through payments of 3.4 billion this financial year. So that led us to that particular crisis. But again, going to next year, we're having that budget deficit of 4.4 billion. So we've got, as I said, we've got vacancy that is high. Uh, in our hospitals, we need to use what we have in order for us to place right people at right places. So with the service uh, optimization, we'll be able to try to mm -hmm. save from the cost on employees, because already we are at 80% plus. So we'll make sure that the hospitals that will be right-sizing will take the human resource that we find in those hospitals, put them in the right place. There is an issue, again, that we are having that we need to attend to of the pyramid that is upside down. If you talk on issues of nurses, where you've got more numbers of the professional nurses than the numbers of the staff nurses and the nursing assistants. Right. So we'll be looking at that using what has been prevented or uh, provided to us by COVID, because we've got already the healthcare workers that we have contracted at the tune of 8,000 that are working in our hospitals and in our clinics. So we'll use that to make sure that we are ready for COVID-19 and we are able to say our people get the care that they want. In, in the issue of the ambulances, again, we want to make sure that we add more ambulances because, as you know, we are a rural province. In order for our people to have access to the basic health care services that they so require, we need to have ambulances so that where we are saying we are putting this hospital as a community health care centre, we are able to say how to make our people therefore get to both district hospitals, regional hospital, exactly. hospitals, tertiary hospitals, and so on and so on. So we are saying the money is not enough, but we'll use what we have to make, to make sure that our people MEC. are serviced and our people are protected from COVID. All right, MEC Noma Kosas and Ameth, um, we're almost out of time, but I just want to alert our viewers to the fact that while we, still, we will continue our chat in a moment, in a moment we're going to take you live, if you're watching, back to Guanongoma, where we're tracking developments around the arrangements for the, the burial and funeral of King Goodwill's Welitini. But I want to stay with you just a moment longer, MEC, because I was looking at your statement that you've issued today, and you say that your predecessors, the other MECs in the Eastern Cape, have done well under difficult circumstances. A lot of the people in the Eastern Cape would disagree with that because they'd say, if those people had done well, you would not be dealing with the problems that you're now going to have to fix. Do you agree with that? Actually, when you talk about COVID-19, nobody was ready for COVID-19. But as the Eastern Cape, if we all uh, care to know, We've been able to manage the recovery uh, uh, rate to more than 94%. And have, uh, we have since experienced a decline, not several in the past four weeks, because of the work that was done. We've managed to build a lot of hospitals that also talk to us improving our infrastructure as we read it ourselves uh, to address the issue of the pandemic. And again, as I said to you, the issue of the problems that I'm talking about is historic. If you talk of hospitals that are not ideal hospitals, it is a program of the National Department of Health to say let's rationalize that. So you can't put a blame to my predecessors to say there's nothing that they've done. Already there is work that has been started that I will make sure that it is completed to do the, the rationalization that I'm talking about. And our people, they do receive uh, the basic services, but there's a lot of work that we still need to do, as I agree with you to say issues of food availability from time to time is an issue that we need to look at because it is uh, as a result of this uh, issue of the financial uh, situation that we find ourselves in. So 
we'll be working to make sure that we do everything in particular, try to be efficient, effective, see how All we right. avoid it in the middle, man. MEC, Noma Kosozan, I met the Eastern our... Cape, New Health MEC. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there. We are out of time. We're heading to the top of the hour.